go to John. Or oh, let's do an Acts. Let's start in Acts chapter 1. And we'll carry on with what we were doing last week. Shared with the band this morning is that um, when we worship, we need to worship in, in spirit and in truth. Okay, and I, I just think, I always ask when, when people come into our church, um, a lot of people that come and end up staying, they stay not, the first thing that stands out for them is like, I feel home here. I feel like there's a sense of genuineness amongst the people, or there's that. That's like a sign of truth, right? If you come here and you feel you have to perform to to look like or to be like or whatever, then you're missing it. Don't don't perform. It must be genuine, and our relationships with Jesus must be genuine as well. So when you read the Scripture or when you read the Bible, it mustn't be like reading a fantasy. It mustn't be like reading a, what do you call, a novel. It's, it's your life. Every time you open it up, it must be like, this is part of me. This is who I am. I read this and I, I see this is my life. So that's about truth. And every time you sing that song, it's like, it's like Lord, it's, you're, like we're saying, it's your breath in our lungs. That's our, that's, that's who we are, okay? That, and it's the truth of who you are. Now, Amen. Acts chapter 1, oh yeah. let's read from verse 8. But you will receive power, someone say power, ability, say it, efficiency, and might. Okay, you will receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. If any of you is saying this, not, not, there's a couple of scriptures that you can combine um, to, to, make, to make it scriptural, but he said this, the Spirit within you is for your benefit and the Spirit upon you is for the benefit of the world. I think that was that's quite good. To me, it's the same thing. But, uh, but we have to know that we have, a, we have the Spirit just not for our own benefit. We have it for the benefit of, of the world. All right. If it's possible for me to look in everybody's eyes today and remind you that you are called, and that Jesus died for you, and that he saw you fit for that, for the, to carry and to wear the Spirit of God. Each one of you, not some, you, to have the Spirit of God, that big God can fit in small you. <laughs> All of him in you, not a little bit, not a part of the Spirit the Spirit of God. Think about that. I think in the, the church, let me, let me read um, verse 10, or verse 9, he says, when he had said this, even as they were looking at him, he was caught up, and a cloud received and carried him away out of their sight. And while they were gazing intently into heaven, as he went, behold, two men dressed in white robes suddenly stood beside them who said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing into heaven? This same Jesus, who was caught away and lifted up from among you into heaven, will return in just the same way which you saw him go into heaven. I look at this, and I relate so much to the men of Galilee, and I think you've heard me preach about it a number of times, because I'm like, yes, Jesus, why did you have to go? Doesn't make any sense. Lord, why did you have to go? You could have stayed. We could have built a kingdom. You could have been king. We would have grown like something. We, we could have all moved there, you know? Why did you have to go? But he knew. He had to go. And we, we've done good teaching on that. John 16, you can read it. He says, if I do not go, 
I cannot send you the spirit. And so I, I like to learn from, from movies. I watch a lot of movies. And um, one of the most <laughs> biblical movies that you could get that a lot of stories come out of is The Lion King. Okay? I love The Lion King. Yeah. The Lion King, it's major. Because Simba, is he king? You know, it was Simba the king? Yes. I was looking at this this morning, and I see how that O dropped. And I remember that there was an ad a couple of years ago called Freedom. And the guy said, are you free or are you dumb? <laughs> and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, are you king or are you dumb? It's kingdom. But, but Simba went through like this dumb phase in his life where he believed the lie. And so, so, and then you must know, Rafiki gets to him, he says, hey man, um, your father is alive. And he says, no he's not. He says, yes, he lives in you. You know, he lives within you. He's in you. And um, he said, no, I don't believe you. And then he, he went into that little pond or whatever, and he looks into the water, and as he looks into the water, he sees his own face. He's like, it's not my dad. That's just me. And so Rafiki says, look again, look again. And then he looks again, and then all of a sudden his face changes. And then it's Mufasa. <laughs> and, then, and then the big cloud comes and says, Simba. And then, and then, Father. And then he says, Simba, you have forgotten me. So I said, no, how could I forget you? He says, no, you've forgotten who you are. So you've forgotten me. And this is, this is what happens with us. We forget who we are. I, we need to hear it as, as often as, as possible so that we don't just say cliches like I believe. Believing needs to become part of us so that we know that we carry the Spirit, that we are kings, amen, that we are, that we are priests in a kingdom. Oh, I thought that was amazing. So, I don't know. The title of the message shouldn't be, are you a king or are you dom? But maybe <laughs> kingdom. Let's read John 14, verse 17, quickly. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see him or know and recognize him, but you know and recognize him, for he lives with you, and he will be in you. Huh? So if you stand in front of the mirror and you just see your face like a Simba, nah, he's not in me. No, he says if you look, you'll see him. You will see him. He's in you because he lives within you. Wow. Wow. I'm, I'm looking at you and it's like I have to convince you. <laughs> but the Spirit of God says he'll come <laughs> And he will remain in you. Amen. I think we make a mistake because we, we, we have a cut-out picture of what a Christian that is filled with the Spirit should look like. And when we measure ourselves up, we think, nah, it's not me. Huh? Come on, we measure ourselves up, nah, it's not me. And so we, we, we go into the jungle and we live a hakuna matara life. Uh, we, we should have a kingdom. Come on. <laughs> I, I, I know, you know, like, I, it's my prayer always. Lord, Lord, please, we, I hear your word. I want to live it. So let's, let's embody it and let's live it today. Amen. So um, I wrote this quote down by, uh, I think it was Kenneth Hagin who said, if you have the word without the spirit, you'll dry up. Okay? If you have the Word without the Spirit, you'll dry up. If you have the Spirit without the Word, you'll blow up. Okay? I'll explain it a bit more now. But if you have the Spirit and the Word, you'll grow up. What will you grow up? You grow up into Him. You grow up into Him. So if you have the Word without the Spirit, come on, we all know what it's like. You go to church and you sit under the Word, but there's no Spirit. There's no inspiration. There's, it's just, <clears throat> do this, get this right, don't do that wrong. 
That is, there's no spirit on it. It's just a word, okay? And then you can go to another place. Maybe they sing signs and wonders, but they're preaching a message that's off. That's where you blow up. <laughs> but the word and the spirit, then you grow up. And we're called to grow up into Christ, to understand both, you know. Uh, the Bible doesn't say, what is it, Father, Son, and Holy Bible. And we have to realize as well that Jesus and them didn't walk around with the Bible. Paul and them didn't walk around with the Bible. They had the, they had the, they had the letters, right? They had some letters and they had the Torah and their things. But we've got everything here. You know, we've got a Bible. But they, T.D. Jake said, oh, so you know the Bible, but do you know his voice? You know, do you know his voice? So we have to have this balance of, of being connected to that. So um, we started speaking about the Spirit last week, so I'm going to carry on with that today. And uh, let's, let's trust God, see how deep we can go. Amen. All right. All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. In science and biology, they are, they are beginning to teach us, I think the whole mental health awareness thing has, has got people to start saying like, listen to your feelings. Listen to the way you feel. A feeling is good. Feelings are there, you know. Um, it's like if you have a, a red car, oh, a red car, a car <laughs> that the, the red light comes on, right? If that red light comes on, what do you do? Take the red light out, no problem anymore. <laughs> no, they are, they are feelings, they are, they are signals about something. You know, check this or check that. The Holy Spirit does the same thing. He gives you feelings. Um, it's not always the same, but, but the Holy Spirit wants to, um, he, he comes and all of a sudden you don't understand why you feel a certain way. Why are you thinking certain thoughts? Because the Holy Spirit is alive in you. All right? So I want you to see this. In 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he says, verse 15, okay, do you not see and know that your bodies, say body. Okay, what is your body? Just by the way. Hello, hands, arms, head, everything is your body, right? He says that your bodies are members of Christ. Am I therefore to take the parts of Christ and make them parts of a prostitute? Never, never exclamation, exclamation, all right? Do you know and realize that when a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her? The two, it is written, shall become one flesh. Next verse. But the person who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Okay? All right, so he's giving the example. You have those who become one flesh, but the person who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. So I now become one spirit with, with the Holy Spirit. Okay, I, I remember I did this thing in Diamantfeld. How many of you guys come from Diamantfeld? Any of you? No. Was jylle daar toe ek oor die chappies gepraat het die tijd, of nie? Oh, you guys didn't go to VSCS here. You weren't those... Those kind of kids. <laughs> I had a breakdown outside of the Amanfelt one day. So I'll share, I'll share my story. I was doing like a, um, uh, what do you call a demonstration? There's a better word for that in sermons. Illustration. Illustrative uh, sermon. And uh, what I did was I took my water and I drank it. And I asked everyone, is this 100% pure water? All right. And they say, yes. I say, will you drink it? And they said, yes. And so um, then I took chappies. I got everyone that was chewing chappies. I said, chew the chappies. 
spit it in the water. And then anyway, so they all sp- spat it in the, in the water. And I said, will you drink this? And they said, uh, no, we won't drink that. And so my point was that we become one with God and that in actual fact, our impurities don't affect Christ. Because I'm in Christ doesn't mean he's not a Holy Spirit anymore. He's still Holy Spirit. All right? So if you, you in Christ, you're complete. It doesn't make Christ incomplete. Your imperfections don't change Christ. So if your spirit becomes one with Holy Spirit, what does that say about your spirit? It's also holy. All right? We become so one with him. But anyway, so long story short, after the meeting, I was thirsty, and I just grabbed the closest bottle next to me, and I drank it. And with, when I drank it, I tasted every kind of different flavor of watermelons and everything. And I looked at it, and I saw some of the kids saw me. It's, a, it's always a funny place when you find yourself in, when you know that you just ate something wrong, and if you decide to spit it out or to swallow it. Anyway, <laughs> we'll spare you the detail. And so I went outside, I sat in my car, and I had like a breakdown. Lord, why? <laughs> I don't know. What's the lesson here? No. But I become holy. I become one with Him. I, we become one spirit with Him. One spirit. One spirit with Him. Um, grace is very much, sometimes, if you have grace, it, it can be speaking about the Holy Spirit. Grace is the same as the Spirit of God. It's undeserved, unmerited, it's favor, it's power, it's ability, and it's strength. Back to Lion King. If Mufasa could just come back and run the kingdom. So much better, right? But Mufasa lived in Simba. In the same way, uh, imagine Jesus returns today. Please come, Lord. Don't let my sermon stop you. <laughs> but if he comes, where will we all go? You know, like how does he put up a, what's going to happen to the earth? Where? Where does he go? Do we all locate and go live in Jerusalem? Or what if the reality of his spirit can be so intensified that we know and we walk in the spirit that it's like he said, just as he sent me, I'm sending you. Lord, wake us up. Lord, just do something that we can understand the reality of our spirit. So I always, of his spirit, I always, I've realized in my life that it's more simple than what you think. It's more simple than what you think. And I, I, whenever I preach, I think, I preach it in a level where everyone can relate. Because the Spirit of God is in you. He is in you. And if you carry on trusting Him, and you ask Him to speak more, you'll be surprised and you'll actually realize He's been speaking to you all along. All along. Sometimes I don't, I don't even know. I make a decision and I end up at a certain place and it's just like, like it was scripted. Where does that come from? It's the Spirit of God. He somehow gives me thoughts and ideas and it, it happens. Yeah? Amen? All right. But Romans 8. Let's go Romans 8. Romans 8 verse 8. Romans 8 squared. (laughs) All right. So then those who are living the life of the flesh, now Amplified says very nice because they they are catering to the appetites and the impulses of their carnal nature. So you, if you stop there, um, and you understand um, what it means, it means they are going on based on how they feel. You know, this is the way I am. This is how I feel. This is how I was made. This is how I was born. Um, I'm hungry or whatever. I feel like doing this. 
And, and he says, those who are living the life of the flesh, catering to the appetites and impulses of their carnal nature, cannot please or satisfy God or be acceptable to Him. Now, every, most often when we read that, part of me says, yeah, Lord, I'm not accepted by Him. But because I've also got impulses. I've also got appetites. I've also got that carnal nature. But then the next verse is so encouraging. But you are not living the life of the flesh. You are living the life of the Spirit. If the Holy Spirit of God dwells within you and directs and controls you. Wow. But if anyone does not possess the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So now I have the Spirit, and now the Spirit is in me. And now we know what uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the last verse there says, And we hold the thoughts and the feelings and the purposes of his heart. Yes! We get to think like him. We get to, to, to feel what he feels. Uh, everything gets intensified. These guys just came from, back from a camp, and I heard that they had a great time. And, but we all know, like, when the, the Lord comes over you, it's like emotionally everything gets, like, almost intensified. All of a sudden, when you, when you watch a, a movie and they, they say the Lord's name, it's like, enough, ouch, you know? Like, taking, taking the Lord's name, you feel it. It's like, no, man, don't do it. Don't say that. When someone in town says it, it's like, yo. I remember one time, just, I just couldn't take it anymore in, in class. You know, these kids were saying it. I said, no, man. And I, I gave him a whole sermon about how that Jesus died for them. And how, <laughs> he goes, don't say that name. <laughs> but you begin to feel things. You begin to feel things. And um, Jesus does not make you feel things. To, in order to crush you. or to, he, he allows us to feel things to empower us. Um, I think I shared a bit of our, of our story um, last week. Uh, and I want to speak about the body. That's actually really the, the impact that the Spirit has on our bodies. Because it's not like we're, we're made, like I have a spiritual life and then I have this body life. So God's idea is really that, that, we, that we are one, that it must be one, that it operates as one. So that I'm spirit and I'm body, and I'm soul, I'm all of that, in, and it's happening. But the spirit has a direct impact on your body. Do you know, um, how, does, how does a word come and Jesus comes and says, you're healed? And then why, how does words impact your body? Right? So we need to understand, then surely the Spirit in us must have an impact. And if we can watch our impulses, if we can watch what, what's going on in our heart and in our minds, then the, the Lord will, will do more. But now, all right, so we, so we read that. So let's read um, verse, okay, let's read this again, verse 9. You are not living the life of the flesh. And I found if I read the Bible and he's addressing me, I can maybe say, I am not living the life of the flesh. So if, if you say it over yourself, you see it does something to you. Let's read that together personally. Read, I am not living the life of the flesh. I am living the life of the Spirit. The moment you say that, it's like, yes. Every time I watch a Marvel movie, I love it. Most people do. Most people love superhero movies. Yeah? Why do we love it? Because it's a part of us that says, yes, that's who we are, actually. They're just trying to describe who we are. Let's go to the next verse, 10. If Christ lives in you, then although your body is dead by reason of sin and guilt, the spirit is alive because of the righteousness that he imputes to you. Next verse. And if the Spirit of Him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then He who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will restore to life your mortal bodies. Let's quickly do it in the King James Bible. King James says it nicely. We'll add in, in my sermon, but he says, if the Spirit of Him who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead 
he that raised up Christ Jesus will quicken. Yeah. He that raised up Christ shall quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. He will quicken. He will quicken. So you can also say, Lord, quicken me. Quicken my body. Make me alert to, to the spirit. Make, make me alert to the spirit. I remember, and we need to teach it a little bit more because it just means if I realize that my body must respond to the spirit, I'll be more alert, okay? I'll be more alert. You'll have more wisdom to work with, with the people in your, in your circles. You'll have a, a, more, a better idea of what to do. One of the lessons that I, I think I have shared here before, but I remember I was in uh, Mozambique. I hear lots of stories of Mozambique. And uh, while I was in Mozambique, um, I, I was standing by a braai with a couple of guys. The next thing I'm just doing, I'm doing this. You guys remember the story? I don't know if you do. But I'm just doing this. And while I'm doing this, I say, I get myself, Lord, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And as I ask the question, I look to the left and about there where the, where the table is, there's a guy doing this. So I'm like, okay, that's not coincidental. What must I tell him? So then I went, so it was like a direct um, to go speak to that guy. Yeah, and it's amazing how the Lord will work with you. It's amazing how Jesus will work with you. And so I went and I gave him a word based on a feeling that I had in my body. Because I'm one spirit with him. Hallelujah. Because I've become one with him. Yes, I get one with him. We had... Uh, I'll share what, some of the stuff that happened. How I came to Kimberley, a lot of people don't know. But um, I was working at a Bible school, and uh, I began to get tired where I was working. I felt I didn't have the energy to do what I was doing anymore. And so some people will say, oh, that's burned out. You just burned out. Or maybe it's the spirit inside you signaling, it's time to go. Okay, and I'm like the kind of guy, I don't make a decision very, very quickly. And I always advise people, even if they tell me the Lord told me to do this, I will say, are you sure that the Lord told you to do that? So I'm the kind of guy who waits till the Lord writes it on the wall or sends an angel. But long before, he would, he would speak to me. And I remember we were sitting in, um, uh, on the coast somewhere in the Western Cape, and I was sitting and I was praying. I've got so many diaries. And I wrote to Lord, what do I do here? What do I do? I feel like my time is finished. I don't know where to go. You know? And I prayed and I always felt Kimberly because we did something here and we wanted to always continue to do that. And I prayed. And I said, Lord, where do we go? I came back to, to the ministry that we were working at. And I said, Esh, guys, I'm tired. I don't... I don't I don't think, I think I'm going to start finishing up. So they prayed for me. <laughs> and I carried on for a while, for about two months. And I just, things just weren't working. So eventually, um, a guy walked from the army. You know, praise the Lord that he sent such signs and wonders my way. People don't, have, didn't get it the way that I got it. But there was a guy who walked from the army that I never met in my life before who wanted to see me. He said, Bruce, I don't know if this means anything to you, but I felt I had to walk here to see you. And he says, I had a dream about you in Kimberley. And I said, no. <laughs> don't, don't say anything else. Don't say anything else. And that's all I needed to hear. But I still didn't make up my mind. I knew I had to come back. And uh, I told Anya, and then... I think you know the other story about a guy who stopped me when our car broke down and I walked into a spur and while we were sitting at the spur, he's looking at me the whole time <laughs> and he says, yes, it can't be. He says, I've been trying to phone you the whole week at, at the, the church that we were at. He said, and they said, you weren't there but now you're here. <laughs> he said, I had a dream about you in Kimberley. You were building a big church and there were so many people around, and I thought to myself, yeah, sounds about right. 
And there was one morning, there was one morning where I just finished, um, there was one morning where the pastor asked me to do a session with the staff devotion. And the, and the church had just gone through a really hard time. And while I'm, while I'm speaking and preaching, I felt so much compassion for them. I walked out of the church and I told Anya, no, we can't leave now. I can't leave them now. And then I got a call from a farmer in Mozambique. He said, Bruce, <laughs> I had a dream you were leaving, leaving the church. And he says, and while you were leaving, you turned around and got back because your heart is for the ministry. But the Lord said, go, so go. <laughs> so he made it so clear. And eventually we decided, okay, let's go. And then we came here. And it's now, I think, seven years later, and we're pastoring a church and we're doing all of that. But the lessons that I learned is that, that the Lord, His Spirit is alive and active. Some of us, we don't realize when the Lord is, is busy with us. There's a difference between being lazy and being tired. If, if you, you need to learn the impulses of the Spirit. Sometimes we don't know that it's Him, and it's important that we don't. But when I begin to realize that I'm one with Him, that even my mind and my, my body is responding to, to what the Spirit of God is directly leading me, you know, you, I've never ever felt controlled. I've never felt controlled by the Spirit. I've felt, I've felt Him come over me. I've, I've felt what it feels like to be slain in the Spirit. I've experienced all of that, but I've never in my life ever had a feeling where, well, no, you know, I've never felt like that. And it's these assumptions that, that we have that stop us from realizing when it was God and when it was not. In the same chapter, we, we pray, um, it teaches us that... Um, we know that all things work together for good to them that love him. That means that he's working even when we don't know it. Right? Come on. Woo! Okay, but you guys are just thinking, man. You're thinking. You're thinking. You're enjoying it. <laughs> okay. I just share the story so just to encourage you. That's all. That's the only reason why I share the story. Maybe I can make you alert and awake and say, like what Benny Hinn wrote that book, he said, oh, Benny Hinn is featuring in my sermons today. Oh, the other thing is, we have just got endorsed by Toblerone. This message <laughs> was brought to you. I'm looking at it. If you, if you buy Toblerone after this message, I think we must get some kind of, um, what's it, what's the word? Royalties or... Yeah, some credits for that. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> How did I get there? Oh, yeah, Benny Hinn said, he wrote that book, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. That's had such an impact on so many people. But if we begin to realize that, I'll share another story. One, one more story, then we'll do some more reading. Um, I'll do, how old are you, Aiden? Turning 16, this is the older you get, you say I was 32 last year. <laughs> I don't know where that happens. <laughs> but um, when I was 15 years old, I, that's when I had my encounter with Jesus. I don't know how many of you guys are 15. Okay, 15, it's amazing. It's exactly half a city. It's crazy. It's crazy. But um, at, at 15 years old, I had such a hunger in me. I, I felt like the whole world is just going to open up for me. Like, man, 15, after school, I would be out in the townships and I'd be, I'd be, I'd be laying hands on the sick. Like, not every day, but that's what I did. That's all I wanted. All I wanted was to be in ministry. That's all I wanted my whole life. But I remember beginning... Um, watching people, and um, what they would always do is they would say, who's got, who's got back pain here? And then like two or three people would get up. And I'm like, how do they do that? How did you know that? There's people with back pain. 
Like, who's got pains in their hands? And like, me. And they would come up. And I'm like, how do you do that? I said, Lord, teach me. I also want to do these things. I also want to move in the Spirit. And so the Lord began to teach me. I'll teach you in your own way. But what I found is, is that my way is not necessarily going to be your way. You wear Jesus the way you wear Jesus. And I wear Jesus the way I wear Jesus. But I can, I can help with something. So I started paying attention just to, to what I'm thinking. And I started paying attention to what I'm feeling. And um, I, I've often quoted that scripture from that we have the thoughts and the feelings and the purposes of His heart. And I remember the one day, I think I shared it last week. Last week uh, we spoke about it. I was standing at a hospital. And I would, I would just go um, and minister at the hospital. I remember waiting outside the hospital for one person uh, to come in and pray with me. And while I'm busy texting on my phone, it was amazing, my foot starts pinching underneath. It's almost like someone pinches my foot like that. And where most people will like, yeah, my foot is pinching. I asked, why is my foot pinching? Lord, is that you? And it was the same thing. I turned around, and here comes a woman limping. And I knew, I knew the Lord wants to minister to this person. But now I already knew what was wrong with her. So I just went to her, and I took my phone, if this was my phone. I said, excuse me, ma'am, do you have pain under your left foot right there? She said, yes. Pain is leaving you now in Jesus' name, something like that. And I walked away, and I carried on with my phone. It was effortless. She was healed right there, without laying hands, without anything. She looked. She didn't know if she must talk to me or not. I, I remember she walked out, and she, like, and she was walking normal. The Spirit of God, you'll receive power, ability, and might. You know how many inventions were by Christian people, were by believers? Why? The Spirit of God. The Spirit of God will make you look smart. You will. We had a, a saying in our Bible school that I try to teach our students, naturally supernatural. Don't be weird. <laughs> don't be, you know, don't be, don't be strange and off. Be powerful. Be powerful. The gifts of God are not weird, they're powerful. The Spirit of God is not weird, He's powerful. Um... All right, all right, I wanted, to read, I wanted to read Romans 8, but he says, those who are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. If we begin to acknowledge that I'm not living the life of the flesh, come on, I'm not living the life of the flesh. I woke up, I got to church today, I go to work every day, I'm on assignment because the Spirit of God is in me. How many times have we been disobedient? We didn't do, we didn't act. Okay, so this is where I want to kind of, of, of wrap it up and, and land it. Wie het Gestaan. Somebody asked me if I'm going to land it. I'm going to land it once today. Hey? Let, just give me a shot first before you hold a gun to me. Okay. Paul writes and he says, okay, where do, you feel, where do you feel the Spirit most? I feel Him here mostly, right? I feel Him here mostly. I don't know how you feel, but He manifests in all different kinds of ways. But one of the most powerful ways He says is what Paul says is, I exercise my conscience. I make sure that my conscience is void of offense towards God and towards people. And so if I always look after that, I can't get rid of offense. I need to deal with offense, right? I can't ignore offense. If it's there in my heart, then it's okay. Like someone said that you've got five minutes to be offended. Get over it then. No. I have to look after that. So the first time that God says, Go do this, and you don't listen. 
It's like where it begins. Am, am I exercising my conscience? No. Okay. Um, you walk past the paper, and you see the paper, and it says, pick up the paper. Mm -mm. Eventually, what begins to happen is you can almost not walk past any paper without picking it up. Because the Spirit of God says, do this, do that, do this, do that. Okay, now that you've done that, see that, that man there? He's got pain in his right shoulder. How do you know? Well, I've just listened to him if I pick that up. And you know what? The Lord is faithful. And he'll do it. So if he trusts you with the small things, but ask him, Lord, show me. What am I feeling? What am I, what am I experiencing? Um, you have to practice it. Um, other thing that you can do, Pray before you start your day. It's not always going to happen that way. But pray. Make a thing of praying. Say, Lord, well, good morning, Holy Spirit. I'm living your life. Show me. Where you are right now, but if the Lord so happens to send you there, then you're on assignment. All of you are on assignment. Okay. All right. Last in that point is part of my landing. Sitting right now, what are you feeling? What are you experiencing in your heart? Okay? It's important to God. You know? It's important to Him. If I hold these feelings, I have to be able to experience it. And so feelings is a good thing. That was my point earlier. It's a good thing to feel. Watch what you're feeling. Because he's going to use feelings. All right? He's going to use feelings to show you things. It's for the benefit of the people around you. The Spirit of God is there for the benefit of the people around you. Amen. <laughs> Come, let's stand. When I'm in church, when I visit a church, I pray for prophetic words even when I don't get the chance to share it. So I practice my, my conscience, you know. I have a, I, I really believe my part is I love to see healing, I love to see signs. So often when I'm in a church or a building, I feel pains in my body. You can ask, well, Lord, show me. I want, to, I want to be led by the Spirit. I want to experience those things. Then you will find that it's already there. He's already been leading you all the time. So just put your hand on your heart. Father, we want to be alert to your voice. I pray, Lord, that... Like we said, like that car has signals and alerts that this body, which is your temple, which we present to you as a living sacrifice, God, live through us. Have your way. Come into our lives, into our routines, daily notes, uh, daily, and speak through us. Whether we know it or whether we don't know it, that you'll speak through us. That you'll be a, a reality in our lives. I just know the Lord is just saying, I've been speaking to you. I've been showing you. I've been leading you. You're not here by coincidence. Your life, you haven't got to where you are by coincidence. I've brought you here. I've brought you here. I'm going to continue leading you. I will perfect the work that I started in you. Mm. You will be a river <laughs> in dry places. Church is not come and sing five songs 
and go home. Church, shine. You are the church. You are the church. You are my bride. I trust you with my spirit. I trust you with, yeah, with myself. Be that temple of God. Be alert to what I'm doing in you. Listen to my voice. Follow the promptings of the Spirit. Follow the promptings of my heart. Mm. So, Father, I pray right now, quicken these mortal bodies. Quicken them. Let this body respond to your Spirit. Let our mortal bodies respond to your Spirit. And let everything around us respond to your words. That the the same words that go through your mouth that bring results will be the same words that come through our mouth that will not return to you void. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So right now, as this church, as these people have their hands in their hearts, Lord, I commit them to your, to your grace. I commit them to your spirit. I thank you, Father, we will not tell old stories of what you did, just old stories. But Lord, that you'll prove yourself to be alive and active in their lives, powerful in their lives, in their schools and the work areas. I thank you, Lord, for the most exciting testimonies that are about to come out. Risks, <laughs> and you catch them. Risks of faith. <laughs> Steps of faith. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So just take this moment while we're praying. Pay attention to what you're feeling. Just, just pay attention to what you're feeling. Mm. It can be very light. Very, very light feeling. Pay attention to what you're thinking. It might be in my mind. In my thoughts. Ask God to give you something to work with today. To apply in your life. Ask him for the unknown, something that you don't know, something that needs faith. And now, Lord, I just pray now that you just intensify everything, make it real, make our, our encounters with you so intensified and real. Help us walk out. When we walk out here, that we'll know that we're one with you, Lord, that we're one with you. And that comes with our failures and our shortcomings and everything that comes with you. We're one with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Our imperfections don't change the fact that we are holy in Christ. That we are one spirit with you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So whatever you got, write it down. Now, once you wrote it down, ask God for the, the wisdom to apply what you have. You know? Ask God for the wisdom to ap apply the word, and uh, and just don't overcomplicate it. Don't overthink it. Don't sermonize it. <laughs> don't get weird either. Be powerful. Be powerful. Okay.